welcome back. Thanks for joining us again for the A1 show. Aaron's back again with me. Good to be back. How's it going, lads? Uh, so we're going to talk about, we have a rough plan. Aaron came usually well prepared again with no plan for this fucking show. So we threw together four topics here. The world's TUEs, the big return to training and upcoming shit that we have planned. So we're going to try and roughly stick to that but we'll probably go on a segue somewhere yeah we're gonna jump from one to from uh, one to the other more than likely i think uh anthony the worlds obviously is probably what we should go on first the worlds are coming up um and we want this kind of to go out pretty soon because uh obviously we're only putting this out after the worlds because <laughs> it looks like obviously we know who won at that stage yeah so. we definitely won't be talking about the stag party we were at the weekend uh well you we can if you want but no, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> i just let around now bugle got robbed i got yeah, I didn't get battered. Um, I got a dig in the ribs and penis oikos that went down like a sack of spuds. Um, and uh, yeah, still licking me wounds over it. Got 300 quid robbed off me as well. So Warden the like, skateboarding community was, it was teenage skateboarders that robbed them, but we're not sure, yeah, unconfirmed. Mm. Mm. Right, so we won't get into any more of the debauchery that went on that weekend. Uh, worlds, it's flat, it's Qatar, it's Doha finishing in the pearl. Uh, it's likely to be temperatures in the 30s if, if it blows the sandstorms out there are a nightmare crosswinds every year a factor in Tour of Qatar so bearing all that in mind how do you think it's going to pan out? Um, well I think you got to look at you got to look at the Tour of Qatar over the last couple of years and you got to look at the guys that were up there I know not all the best guys in the world were at Qatar on form there but you know it's pretty evident who, who the good guys are in those conditions um, it really depends on how hard the wind blows um, obviously you're out now favourite for the world is going to be Sagan because he can ride in those conditions and he's got the best finish out of all of those guys um, but one of my favourite cyclists and I hope he can pull something out will be Boonen um, I think uh, I think he's capable of a big result there and Boonen's I don't know if that way is he three time Tour de Qatar winner and it'd be uh, the biggest case of going out on top ever although I think Boonen's doing one more year he said uh, well, I'm not sure if it's confirmed yet but he was talking about coming back for one more Ubay. Well, if you got the rainbow jersey you're going to fucking sit at home with it on your kitchen are you oh he definitely would <laughs> I definitely would chocolate sauce all over the front of me rainbow jersey you would as well because you can't keep your mouth shut when you're eating oh, I was out in Qatar last year for the, the A1 coaching training camp and the place is pan flat there's like the city it's a weird strange place it's like a movie set the cities are fairly built up but as soon as you step even two mile outside the city it's into pure desert so i don't think the temperatures are going to be massively high in october but it's still going to be a little bit of a factor and you know i it is difficult to look past some of the, the spanish guys although they're not brilliant in the the likes of Luis leon sanchez something like some a, a rider like that and yeah. Take the heat. I suppose we don't want to take the piss out of Qatar too much either because we have a lot of clients out in Qatar we do have a lot of clients yeah, out in Qatar so, um, I was talking to one of them there not, not too long ago and he was saying that um, you know, his money will be on Sagan um, but and they've loads of money out there as well they have loads so of he's probably putting 100 grand on Sagan yeah, for the crack yeah so it'll be interesting to see who can uh, who can produce the goods but I think uh, the weather's going to play a massive uh, massive deal in it like you know if, it's, if a sandstorm whips up and stuff um also, I was talking to one of the lads there today. He he was saying that like it's going to be a messy sprint as well because uh, team lead outs are not going to be able to control the kind of sprint. And again, that just plays into the likes of Sagan's hands. I think he's uh, he's able to maneuver a sprint better than anybody else. So. Right, so one word, who are you going for? Sagan. Greg Van Avermaet. It wasn't one word, but still. <laughs> <laughs> right, so uh, TU is. It's been in the news a lot this week. For anyone who doesn't know, ter- therapeutic use exemption. Yeah. It's the phenomenon where you can apply for... Uh, prospective permission to take a substance which is on the ban list so it's granted under certain restrictions you know there is a I don't even know if it's written anywhere but there is a duty on the athlete to present his condition to the doctor uh, the key, key word that you use there as well Anthony is condition so the, it's not a preventative measure no you, a, you need to have an actual condition you go to the doctor present him with that you let the doctor know what it is he'll give you a prescription you can take that prescription apply for a TUE so I said that to somebody the other day, and it goes, "What if you have asthma?" But you do, you have asthma. The condition mightn't be, you mightn't be actually ha- having trouble with your breathing at that time, but you've you've been shown to have asthma, and that's what you get the inhaler for. So yeah, exactly. It's not it's not exactly pure, or it's not purely preventative at that stage. You obviously have asthma. So it the issue arose this week. Uh, Russian hackers, uh, Happy Bear. I don't know what they're called. Happy Bear. They're in Dundrum. <laughs> 
the, the, the Happy Pair Restaurant in Greystones hacked the World Anti-Doping Administration. There you go, yeah, there, first lads. So them fucking pair of bollocks is hacked into and they're after causing all this controversy for Wiggins. Uh, it's it's the same thing again. I was talking to someone the other day. Wiggins, I've had like maybe five favourite cyclists over my career and I kind of, every time after the first kind of two or three, I said, fuck it, I'm not having any favourites anymore because they all get done for doping. Um, so it's a lot um, about your character, really. It does, yeah. I don't know what the story is with it. But anyway, Wiggins was the last one that I had. And like I was like, yeah, his fucking career is over now. Away, Wiggins is... Uh, but he's getting dragged through the mud now with it now. And it's like, ah, fuck it, there you go. I shouldn't have had another favourite. But um, at the end of the day, I think, you know, you just need to... Even if you're a Wiggins fan, which I am, and I had, that really hasn't changed. But it has a little bit. I just lost a little bit of respect from the way he even handled himself in the interviews you know, to come out and say that the rest of the lads were using the TUEs for performance enhancing stuff while they were using the same stuff, you know, it's just, it sounds like fucking absolute nonsense. Yeah, I suppose we need to be careful on the old defamatory line to not defame Wiggins too much, but he is a bell end. <laughs> and I think that's fair to say, that's not defamatory. Wiggins is a bell end. Yeah, um, but I think he plays off that as well. But I, I've always liked his bell end attitude. Like, you know, I, <laughs> you liked Wiggins' bell end, you're telling me. No, his attitude. Yeah. yeah. Um, but no, I think um, ultimately, like I think he's um, he's caught by the bollocks. We won't say bell end again with. Uh, what's going on. And I think ultimately, I just think he handled it wrong, and he he was looking at it, like when he was asked the questions. You know, it doesn't take. It's it's very obvious. It's not very obvious in someone's mind, but he looked very uncomfortable in the questions he was asked. He was looking at the ground, and he couldn't look your man in the eye. Um, and it's just it's just an awful can of worms to get caught up in right at the end of his career, really. But what's been clear to see is the lack of support Wiggins has. It it shows how that he wasn't widely liked among riders. That there's so many riders have come out condemning what Wiggins has done and condemning Wiggins' character as a result of it. And it 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 should be noted Wiggins actually hasn't broken any rules at the moment. Uh, it's I actually well, wrote a blog on this. About the thing is, like whether he's question whether he's broken any rules or not, he's. The TUE was for an in, or was for a muscular injection. Sky have an O'Neill's policy, so he's broken Sky's rules. Yeah, but that's not a that's not a rule rule. It's a, maybe an internal team policy is broken. But it, okay. So he he's not technically there's no anti doping infraction is really what I'm getting at. No. But there's something somewhere because somebody's misrepresented the condition, and so whether that's Wiggins misrepresented, where it's the doctor, or where it's somewhere along the line, there there is some amount of you know dishonesty at some stage of the process for this TUE to come out but I think it just raises that wider thing we wrote a blog about this Team Sky it might be legal but it's not moral I don't think pushing these things to the limit is moral I don't think it's in the spirit of sport and the spirit of sport is quite vague a nebulous concept so you know you can't hang people out on my interpretation of what the spirit of sport is but for me it's, it's just not it's just not fair and it's something that's you see asthma inhalers massively over indexed in the domestic peloton at the moment you know i don't I don't have any of the stats for asthma among the general population but it seems like a massive over index of the cycling peloton have asthma as compared to the general population so it's just not right and it's trickle down effect coming from the top that you see you know domestic riders taking inhalers ventil and salbutamol whatever because that's going to have a knock-on effect then to junior riders they're going to think they have to take this stuff to be competitive when it's exactly. just not true yeah and i think for me like i never really thought about it too much but a couple of years back i remember i've only ever gotten a tue once i don't have asthma or anything like that but um i had um i had an injury at the time and i got a, a tue for a cortisone injection um and i can remember just making uh, like this was not, not this wasn't in ireland actually just to put that out there in case and it gets confused with the doctor I was using here or anything like that. It was actually in Australia. Um, but I told him what I was doing, the level I was at, and that I was on the national kind of cow, uh, carden, um, that is it, that's here in Ireland. I was carded at the time. Uh, so obviously everything had to be above board and had to be proved and stuff. So, But it was it was a really, really easy process. I had the TUE stamped, signed and done, and the injection within a couple of hours. So you know, it just showed me, for me at that level, um, that it was really seamless to get something that was massively performance enhancing straight away with the sign of a dotted line. So, you know, not to take in, um, to, to pull doctors into it, but obviously this can't be passed without a doctor's, uh, without a stamp of approval from a doctor. So, you know, again, from a doping perspective at the highest level, I think the the communication or the the kind of the work between an athlete, a team, an athlete and a doctor is where it needs to be targeted really because, 
a TV and with the high the high end of doping, it can't be done by the athlete alone. There has to be some form of doctor or or medicine background behind it. You know. Yeah, it, like it needs to change. I don't think we're going to come up with a solution now, like, <clears throat> but it definitely needs to change uh, to keep us moving along. Uh, the big return we're talking about: people have had their winter break; they're just getting back into training. I call this phase training to train, getting ready to train. What's your thoughts on what people should be doing around now? Um, it's getting to that time where most lads are either on their break or you know they've definitely started their break and they've uh, downtime is I wouldn't say over. Um, a lot of lads will continue now for another couple of weeks um, or even a month for lads that have raced a long season. Uh, I know McKenna is absolutely bollocks at the moment, one of our mates, so he needs to probably take another two months at this stage. But uh, probably what you would you probably wouldn't even be long enough for him. Probably not. No. So he's um, done. But I think at the moment, like for um, for the general amateur back at home um, or wherever you are, I think um, the best move at the moment is even if you are in your break and it's going to run on for another couple of weeks, is to start thinking about how you're going to return. Um, and this comes down to the discussion with your coach, basically, um, whether you're going to be targeting, are you going to be working on strength and condition and what your goals are when you're looking at peaking next year, essentially, and just starting to kind of build around the big picture um, of the of basically of the components you're going to work on when you come back yeah I think I'm going to go back training this Monday that's four weeks off for me so four weeks rough. solid four weeks yeah I've been tipping around we've done the A1 group ride mm-hmm. uh, which segues nicely as if we plan that into our upcoming shit section upcoming shit yeah so we released a cool new coaching platform that you're most likely seeing this on if you're a one on one A1 coaching clients uh, if you're A1 members We've loads of upcoming stuff on there. We've new nutrition plan coming with Barry Murray. We've the strength and conditioning plan that Aaron's working on at the moment. We've 12 new training plans coming out, including four base plans and a specific over 50s base plan. So it's all go, go, go with that. We had the A1 group ride last week and we're having another one next week, I think. Yeah, yeah. hopefully next week, yeah. Next check, week's the plan. Check the Facebook group. And we'll have that details. Actual, that wedding is on next week, though. The actual wedding after that stag that we kind of mentioned at the start of this video. So... Hopefully I'll be good. Yeah, you might cancel the wedding, we'll see. Yeah, you might cancel it. So. Uh, but yeah, now the group ride is brilliant. 25 or so people out, uh, the first group ride. It was class. Uh, for the next one, we're, we might have our kit. Uh, no, we won't have our kit for the next one. We'll have the A1 kit for the, the one after that. Which I'm looking forward to getting that. Uh, we've got the training camp. Uh, myself and Aaron are heading off to Cambrils in Spain on the 5th of November for the training camp. Uh, if anyone still wants to jump on the training camp, I think there's one or two spots still left. So there's a link on the A1 Coaching homepage to check that out. And am I forgetting anything else? I think that's pretty much it. Yeah, no, you just gave a brief overview of the stuff that's coming. Um, just to cover up uh, from the stuff that I've been working on, the strength and conditioning plan, um, there's a lot of research um, and effort gone into the background of that. Um, and I've been working on it a long time. I know it's been it's been coming a while, but um, you know it's uh, it's hopefully going to be worth the wait. Uh, yeah, and to getting it out there. likewise, I've been working hard with Barry Murray, the former BMC nutritionist, on our nutrition plan Barry very much advocates I'm actually just working on a blog at the moment about this Barry uh, very much advocates moving away from carbohydrates as a fuel source and moving to- more towards fats and proteins it's a really interesting philosophy but it's worked for some of the world's top riders he's mentoring Steve Cummings Philip Schilber a host of other riders so very powerful testimonials from the likes of those guys and again massive uh, massively humbling that Barry is coming on board to work with us he's going to be coming on as the new A1 nutritionist also as well as launching this plan he's going to have one-on-one coaching uh, nutrition plans that will accompany our one-on-one training plans at A1 coaching so exciting times yeah looking forward to getting it going I'm looking forward to starting them both myself actually to be honest so. yeah same here I need the strength one and you need the nutrition one <laughs> <laughs> alright that's the crack lads so in case you're down the Greystones and the happy pair just be sure they don't hack into any of your stuff <laughs> <laughs> later lads thanks